So yesterday I saw this, the downfall of r slash anti work. Those who don't learn from the past are due to repeat it. And history isn't a constantly changing thing, but a series <laughs> of repeating patterns. And today we're going to learn about one of the strongest internet movements ever that came crashing down in it's a matter bad. of minutes. This is the story of anti work. Yep. Here we go. I don't like work. Thank God YouTube isn't a real job. But listen, we've all worked bad jobs before. I've been a barista and a dishwasher. I know how bad things really are. But what if you didn't have to work? What if you could complain about work all day without actually working? Well, then maybe you'd be interested in anti-work. Yeah, that's anti -work about right. was one of the fastest growing subreddits of all I'll time. turn it up a bit. Starting back in 2019, it amassed well over a million and mm -hmm. a half members by 2022, which is deep. This shit was so popular. Like, everybody was talking about this. Like, people were going literally crazy uh, about, like, why this was some big thing, right? Work right now. Yeah, this is... People were pissed off about this anti-work thing. And I get it. I think it makes sense. Like, I've always been... By the way, I've been very pro-anti-work. Like, very, very pro and, like, very positive towards anti-work. Absolutely. Decent. Until you realize it got over a million members... Mm -hmm in less than a year, which it's makes crazy. it one of the fastest growing subreddits of all time. But unlike yeah. other subreddits that get a lot of traction in a short period of time, like mm -hmm. a meme subreddit, for example, anti-work had a core message that people were rallying around. The basic message was- <laughs> The core message is fucking Soviet Union soldiers marching with the fucking hammer and sickle in the background. Uh, in my opinion, I think that the anti-work thing is, uh, like, it's going to be weird because I know people will probably be like, oh, but you just said, right? But the truth is, like, I agree with, like, the sentiment that modern day, like, uh, working conditions are terrible. I, I absolutely think so. Work should not be a necessity, but a choice especially in our modern world. Mm -hmm. Now, ideas of anti-work have been supported for quite a while in a yep. bunch of different works. Oh, there yeah. are a bunch of videos out there on YouTube that you can watch that explain this idea in more depth, but the point is, absolutely, it's not a new philosophy, and it's not pulled from nowhere. And whether yeah. you agree with it or not, there's no denying that this was a popular sentiment, especially with... I remember back whenever, this was like two years ago, whenever COVID or a year and a half was going on with COVID, is that it was just crazy that like people were just deciding they're like listen i'm not gonna go to work anymore and like risk my life with this virus going on and the lives of my family just for you know nine dollars an hour to work at taco bell you know what i mean like that's what it is and uh yeah that that's what happens is I, I was not really surprised like anybody who was quitting taco bell and deciding they weren't gonna work there i was like hey that's a smart idea but the, th the thing is, like, everybody was okay with, like, oh, let's give people more unemployment benefits. Oh, let's do more unemployment benefits. Then the time that they roll up to Taco Bell and somehow they start uh, <laughs> fucking, uh, they start seeing that, oh, my God, there's nobody working at Taco Bell. They went home. They threw communist, communist manifesto in the garbage can. They said, fuck that. Fuck this unemployment shit. We got to get these kids back to work. I need my chalupa. That's what it was. They're, they're, all, they're, they're out of Baja Blast. I can't let this happen. The nerds who sit in their basement and complain all day. The uh -huh. subreddit started gaining more popularity, and with this, it expanded its core yeah. values to things like fair wages, mm -hmm. better hours, better benefits, and workers' rights. Because they Yeah, I think those are the things that a lot of people, everybody pretty much agrees with this. And I think that also, this is a... Like, look at this, all right? This is just a, a one chart that I've, I've showed you guys with this before, right? Productivity soars, wages stagnate. Percentage growth in productivity versus hourly compensation. So the green one is how productive workers are, and the gray one is how much money people make. So this is where we're at. Yeah, people aren't getting paid a lot of money for the work that they're doing. That's all there is to it. Countdown? All right, all right. These are generally mm -hmm. popular things amongst the working class so and bad, young adults. It, it attracted more and more members, but the core message How always you stayed the same. Though? A lot of ways. Abolish work. It's around yeah. this time the member number started to skyrocket, mm -hmm. and now it's big. So big that they can actually make changes. 
Wait a uh -huh. minute, this isn't in the normal Reddit video script. One of the big Make ones changes. was the Kellogg's boycott, where Kellogg's workers went on strike, uh -huh. and Kellogg's just decided to hire more workers instead of paying their old workers a fair wage. Yep. The Redditors then crashed Kellogg's website with fake applications, and demanded mm -hmm. Kellogg's pay their employees more. Kellogg said nope, and then people got <laughs> even more upset. This got so massive that even the president commented on it. Eventually Kellogg's caved and the yeah. workers won, so naturally anti-work took all of the credit for this, and oh, while course. I don't think they were fully responsible, it was a nice thing to see, and most importantly, it grew their numbers even more, which gave them... It, it's good for uh, it's good for that to have... I'm gonna just move a on. A bit it's of an... It's a bit weird. Yeah, it, it's like, yeah, I was glad about that, I mean, for sure. And, and like, it did take a while that, like, that happened. Happens even in a professional field, hire more people for less. Yeah, that's, that's the way it goes. And, and like, that's the thing, is like, if you have like a you know like a, a skill set that's easy to replace uh you know it's hard for you to bargain with stuff because you can just get replaced that's the way it goes and so i i feel like with, with the kellogg's thing and kellogg's did this really really smart thing is because people are shitting on kellogg's and so what they did is they took their logos off of the food so people didn't know which food was made by kellogg so they couldn't boycott it isn't that crazy go to yeah, put it isn't lightly. that crazy? Now, if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that yeah. once something gets big enough, it usually goes down the tube, whether like that's channel. in quality or up in flames yeah. in a nosedive. Be it mm -hmm. arrogance, power struggles, or sheer numbers, it either becomes generic front page trash we'll or it goes that. up in flames. I'm actually and curious. Surprise, surprise, anti-work is not an exception. Yeah. The best way to understand what started going wrong is to think of it like a kingdom, like a kingdom okay. of virgins. You have the core castle, and then from oh, there, God. many factions broke off. In this case, you had the original anti-workers who believe in no working, unless oh, you no. want to. Then you had the work reformers who simply right? believe in better workers' rights, but don't yeah. want to abolish work. You had people who were looking for excuses to be lazy and farm karma. Average and of Redditors. course, it wouldn't be Reddit without some Chinese Communist Party shills. Now, there was a okay. lot of infighting amongst these groups, but even yeah, worse course. than that, the fringe minority- I think that it's not always infighting. It, it, it's not always infighting whenever you're talking about this because there are people that are just having conversations. I think the problem is that like there's a lot of people who can't have a conversation about something without turning it into a spur gout, right? Like this is some massive fucking spur gout. They're getting super upset about this and, uh, you know, they're getting pissed off. So you can have a conversation about something and disagree about something without it being a fight of these started to become representative of the entire groups mm -hmm. and combining these all together anti-works public image started to take a bit of a hit people started complaining about yeah. the most trivial shit you could imagine drug testing should be illegal reasoning what you do with your off time is no business your employer even if that means doing trucker sized lines of cocaine on the weekends uh if you're under the influence while at work because that's dangerous as fuck i don't know what do you guys think about that like like, it, it's hard for me to say because, like, you have people that work jobs as, like, a trucker. Like, let's say, and, like, if somebody is doing hard drugs, is it a good idea for society to have that person operating a large truck? You know, is this a good idea? Who is this helping? Who is this good for? I would say probably nobody. But doing drug testing should be illegal. Hmm. Because it's like, it's really hard to prove that somebody is drunk at work or somebody's on drugs at work. Only for certain jobs. I think that's probably where I'd fall under as well. Only for certain jobs. But I think as a general thing, yeah, I'm not a fan of drug testing either. I'd have to really think about it a lot more. Like, yeah, my employer shouldn't have any say in what I do. Yeah, but like, if you're under the influence of things that are like addictive and can mess with your... Uh, uh, like your, your decision making, I think that'd be bad if you're operating something that can affect other people, right? And like they're giving you, so like if, if they're giving you the ability to like operate a machine that can be potentially fatal to other people if it's operated badly, I, I think that it's, it, it is, a, you can make a reasonable argument that they should want you to make sure that you're not under the influence of something. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I'm trying to think about that. Yes, yeah, topics outside your scope, my, my scope? What, like, uh, what, what would I have to, like, what would I, would I need to have a, a bachelor's in political science 
from a from a random four-year state university and somehow i would have an opinion about this i probably know more about this shit than most people do absolutely people get mad because i have an opinion about shit absolutely fucking not yeah uh, i'm trying to think about this everyone drinks on the weekends you can't fire people for that that's a good point yeah I think that's a, that's what I was thinking about too, right? It's like, if you drink on the weekends and you smoke weed on the weekends, like what really is the difference between those two things? And like, if you're doing that at work, I don't know. I don't think this is a very easy decision to make. I, I don't think so at all. Yeah, truckers aren't employees, they're contractors. That doesn't really matter. The point's still the same. Like, I just, okay, that's fine. Uh, employers who take a risk hiring you who get sued if they mess up what responsibility do they have towards the person taking a chance on you yeah it's i don't know yeah I, I really don't know if this is a good thing or not i'd have to really think about that and in construction you don't want to take junkies to clients houses well that's true too absolutely yeah it's this is a hard this is a hard one i don't think it's a simple answer and there were people who <laughs> believed that their life that consists of sitting at home all day doing nothing yeah. apart from doing chores is too stressful. But one thing did come to unite these factions and bring yeah. them together. Lying for fake internet points. Oh, a of marvel of anti-work were these texts exchange yep. of people quitting their jobs, usually due to unreasonable demands from their bosses. The top post of all time is actually one of these, and while mm -hmm. it is kind of satisfying to read, if it isn't blatantly obvious, yeah. it's very fake. But karma breeds more karma. So people started doctoring. Most of the stories, most of the stories in Reddit could end with, and his name was Albert Einstein, and everybody stand up, stood up and clapped. Like, they're mostly bullshit, and it's the same thing with comedians that tell stories that, like, most of these stories are just jokes and funny things that people say, right? Uh, that's all it comes down to. These fake texts yeah. of them quitting their jobs. Everybody makes fake, fake like, fucking stories. Man, are you even trying to make this believable? But nonetheless, people mm -hmm. fell for them. Which, because of how faked they seemed and oh. probably were, made them subject to parody like this. You need to come into work. I have today off. Fuck you, I don't care, I'm evil. Fuck you, dude, <laughs> I quit. I hope you get eaten by animals. I'm sending someone to your house to kill you. What? It's kind of embarrassing the whole anti-work movement the, the process. Fuck? But if you feel no shame at all, oh my God. you probably frequent Reddit. However, this didn't affect their numbers at all. In fact, it increased no. traffic to the sub, funnily enough. I guess there's no such thing as bad publicity. Showing that even uh -huh. though they'd been humiliated publicly on Twitter, other reddits and many other social media platforms. i think that the downfall really was whenever they brought that person on to fox news do you remember that like we can we can watch that interview again if you guys want to see it but like that was the downfall right there they brought a 30 year old balding dog walker that it was the mod of anti-work and like the guy that interviewed him, it was on, so like, I mean, this is on Fox News. You bring over a 30 year old balding dog walker who doesn't want to get a job. It went exactly as you would expect. And I'll go through and we can watch this again because it was just so fucking, it, it was so fucking ridiculous. Watch it. Should I watch, uh, should, should I watch it right here? Just, oh no. Oh, oh, they're going to get into it. Okay. I see it, it. They're about to get into it. Forms. They could take the hit, mm -hmm. or could they? Let's set the stage. Yeah. Anti-work has been exploding with users and media attention. Uh -huh. It's looking like an unstoppable force. Absolutely. But a great empire always asks to do more, to be better, to That's be true. greater. And in this case, they'd have to expand their reach. Mm -hmm. Their goal was to get on a mainstream news outlet. Get the, now, they've get been the mentioning this there. in passing, but this mm -hmm. was more than that. They wanted to get a representative of the movement to show their ideas yep. to the world. They had a few small radio and TV gigs here and there, usually limited to local news stations, oh, yeah, of course. but nothing serious. And unfortunately- Well, this is the thing is like, a lot of these news stations, like Fox News, they're not gonna bring on some guy who's like, you know, well-spoken well-adjusted who just thinks that workers rights should be reformed in america they're gonna find the biggest dumbest idiot and bring him on you know the guy with like the little propeller on his hat <laughs> i'm not gonna work i want play video game i want play video game you know spinning the little thing on his head of course that's what they're gonna fucking get because that's more entertaining for the audience that's what the audience wants to see so they're going to intentionally try to find the dumbest person out there and make them look bad and then by extension make the whole group of people look bad because of that. 
That's Most always big what news is. outlets didn't really want to give them a shot. Yeah. Apart from one, Fox News. Reddit mod, The yeah. polar opposite of their message. The ultimate enemy of anti-work. I actually saw, wasn't Tucker Carlson? Like, I saw there was a fucking meme. I don't know if this is real, because, like, I, I don't know. Like, I mean, they go over some crazy, sh some crazy stuff on this guy's show. Um, fucking, is it he was mad that, like... There was like a dick vein on Snickers bars and they got rid of it. And it was like an attack on masculinity. Was that like a fake picture or was that real? Because like, I don't know what this show, like I could see them. That was fake. That one was fake. Okay. All right. Never mind. Yeah. Well, because like they're talking about like, uh, it's like gay M&Ms or something like that. I, I forgot. It was like a transsexual M&M. And, and like, apparently he did like, people told me that like, he did like a whole show on this. Like, what the hell is going on, man? Yeah, it was fake. No, I'm serious, guys. That's, that's real life. But they are one of the biggest uh -huh. news stations in America. Fox Sometimes you have to sleep with an enemy to expand your hubris. But they'd have to send in their best soldier, oh, their no. David, in order to fight the Goliath of Fox News. Oh, so they no. picked their longest running moderator, somebody who could be a beacon of their message. I would just say, stay tuned. The day of reckoning will come. January 26th. Why is Papa John talking about the day of reckoning? Is he talking about the next time he's going to use the N-word? Is that what he meant? Like, I think that's what it could be, guy. He, he gonna, he's going to say it again. <laughs> he can't stop. 2022. The day of reckoning. Yeah. They eventually got the spot on Fox News and, uh -huh. well... Let's get into that. Now let's break down this interview because oh boy. it's a doozy. Yep. Here we First go. First off, the man giving the interview, Jesse Waters. This guy is such an asshole. Like he's such a complete dickhead. In my opinion, I think that he made the guy, the anti-work uh, guy or whoever, like he made them look uh, sympathetic because he was just so rude and obnoxious to them. Fox News anchor, and while not the top dog, definitely yeah. a known face. Now, there's a chance you might recognize this guy, even if you don't watch Fox uh -huh. News. This is because he conducted the legendary BG Cumby Antifa interview, where he pretended to be an Antifa member, essentially making a mockery of everybody involved. And it's a very funny interview. Was okay. the horse a racist Trump supporter? Yes. But Waters has learned from his mistakes, as you're about to see. He's also known for bringing in these ridiculous characters to make fools. This is, yeah, that's obviously what he does. Is he goes on there, you know, he's this clean cut businessman that's on a suit and he brings on, uh, he brings on this guy, right? And what's he going to talk about? Or he brings on an Antifa member. That's what happens. Themselves in kind of a trollish it's way. It's Murray, a yeah. red flag for sure. But it's an obstacle they would have to overcome. Hello, uh -huh. my majority male audience. Did you know that two out of three of you will experience hair loss by the time you're 35? That's where today's sponsor, Keeps, comes into play. Keeps is here to deliver you generic pharmaceutical meds at half the price of the other companies. It'll ship right to your door, and they have 24-7 care and support. So if you ever have any issues or questions, you can always contact them about your hair loss. To so get 50% off your first order, go to Keeps. Guys, it's not a targeted ad. Like, he just put this in a video, and I happen to be watching it. Like, it's, it's not a targeted ad. They didn't, he didn't edit this in knowing that I would watch the video, okay? Just stop. Dot com forward slash ghost gum or click the link in the description. That's K-E-E-P-S dot com mm -hmm. slash ghost gum. And with that, let's get back into it. Now let's talk about the interviewee, Doreen Ford. Username, Abolish Work. Reddit moderator, work hater, and masturbate. Coming on to share the message of anti-work with millions of people. She has two goals here. Mm -hmm. Preach the message of anti-work and don't get caught in a trap. Pretty simple. So let's go. Question. Well, I don't know about that. I mean, two different goals. Preach the message of anti-work. I have no idea. She, I don't know. There was a conversation about this person being transsexual. I have no idea. Uh, it's hard for me to know. It's just a person on TV. I got no clue. Question by question. I'm going to paraphrase it a bit to keep it concise, but if you want to listen to the full interview, the link is in the description. Mm -hmm. Waters asks, why do you feel you should be getting paid for doing nothing? Doreen gives a very long-winded answer that boils down to, we don't want people to be forced to work in conditions yeah. they don't want to. But yeah. we are not fully against work. Waters follows up with, well, you're not being forced to work. You can quit whenever you want and get another job, mm -hmm. right? He also says... 
I don't understand yeah, really what this is about, sure. except it sounds like maybe people are just being lazy. Which is followed by... Um, so I think laziness is um, a virtue in a society. I like how he says lazy, and he's like really trying here not to smile too much. He's trying super hard. He's like, don't, oh, I'm going to get it. I'm going to get it real quick. Oh, I'm going to get it. Laziness is a virtue. Now, it would be very easy for Waters to step in and slam uh -huh. dunk this person right now, but he knows the art of war. Never interrupt your enemy making when they're making a mistake. Yeah. They then end up moving on to working hours, where Doreen talks about appropriate working hours, to which she states she works 20 to 25 hours a week. Waters asks, what do you do? This is the moment where everybody watching this video collectively facepalmed. So I would like less work hours. Um, and what I do you do, Doreen? Uh, I'm a dog walker. A dog walker. But here's the thing. Somebody got to walk the dogs. I mean, somebody got to walk the dogs. What's wrong with walking the dog? That's a job? Yeah, it's a job. There are these guys and like uh, I will walk to the store and they'll be walking like I'm talking like seven, ten dogs at a time. And like they have like these like little scooters or like rolly things that are on there. And that they're like uh, these motorized scooters and they have all the dogs pulling them on these like motorized scooters while they have like on one hand like a fucking phone and they're listening to Tame Impala. It actually sounds like a good job. Like you just get pulled around the neighborhood listening to Tame Impala on like a scooter for like two hours and then you go home like no really like it. it they're chilling man like what's wrong with that? It gets worse. And while I could describe it, mm -hmm. I think it's better if I just show you. I mean, okay. I would love to teach. Uh, I would love to, um, you teach. know, uh, work, with, work with people and well, stuff like that. What would that. you yeah. teach, Doreen? Uh, a philosophy, mostly. Philosophy. Just introduction to philosophy, critical thinking, yeah. and stuff like that. Okay. And the interview ends on this note. Uh, I think this might not be the greatest idea, but who am I to judge? To each their own. It's That's a, right. It's a free country. Now, I don't know about you, but this was hard to watch. I have a big stomach for cringe, and this was tough to get through. I've had I, I thought, I didn't see, like, in my opinion, I thought that Jesse was the bigger asshole here. Like, Doreen might be a clown, right? It, it's like, yeah, sure. It's like, he's a bit of a clown, but, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, how the fuck am I supposed to know? Is the audio weird? Yeah, it's just, it's not much of a thing. Asshole equals wrong. Yeah, the guy was an asshole. That's all there is to it. Like, yeah, he goes on there, brings somebody on there, makes them look like a dickhead, and that's it. To watch this many times to make yeah. this video, and it never gets easier. Seeing somebody get interviewed on a mm -hmm. major news outlet with zero preparation and zero social awareness, taking the bait that everybody knew was coming, and just asshole completely versus clown. bombing. Yeah. It really is a historical moment. So we're well, this is what this is what the problem was with anti-work is like the moment that the one thing people don't like that kills internet movements is whenever they look stupid is because people don't like looking stupid especially not on reddit like if people look stupid on reddit they will delete their post they'll delete their whole account like i don't know what it is about reddit but people just cannot afford to take an l on that website man it is impossible out on anti-work about the Fox News interview, mm -hmm. and at first the mods seemed happy about the job and were actively promoting yeah. the interview. The community, oh, yeah. however, didn't. But I mean, why are they shocked? One of the anti-work moderators went on to an interview doing zero work to prepare for uh -huh. it. Why are you surprised? Now, after this interview, you had one of two yeah, reactions. He didn't do work you to had a laugh yeah. at the insane cringe, or you were angry. And let me tell you, most of the people on anti-work were not happy. Remember how I talked about the factions earlier? Oh, they were mad. And then, like, that person, like, they were so furious at them because, like, a lot of people that were part of, like, I don't know, you could call, like, this the movement, right? Is all of these people were pissed off because they just had this person go on and now anybody who thinks of anti-work is going to think of this person. And that's not necessarily a good thing. Not at all. 
Twitter. Well, it turns out a good chunk of these people were not happy with a mod going on Fox yeah. News in the first place, either because they don't support Fox yep. News or they knew this would happen. Originally, the mods were quick to remove any comments calling out this disaster of an interview, mm -hmm. banning people, removing posts, deleting comments, crazy. standard stuff. Although the banning this was, was not very effective and it was very slow, especially when the posts were getting so many upvotes and so much attention. They had a full-blown mutiny on their hands. Yep. <laughs> 24%. People with legitimate concerns claiming that this ruined the sub's image. Oh, it did. And then did. there were people going in there to troll. Come on, guys. It absolutely did. Okay, it's a little bit funny. People saying that this made them look like lazy, unemployed losers. I mean, it's literally called anti-work. So they said, fuck it. Nuclear option. Subreddit has gone private due yep. to, quote-unquote, brigading. It was eventually restored yep. with a nice four-step reopening plan mm -hmm. for a subreddit. Proposed. This is always what it is. It's like these people. Like I, I was just like, I could not even fucking believe that. That's the whole point. Yeah, it's anti-work. Nah, the thing is, like, you have like these Reddit mods, and you shouldn't look at Reddit mods to be the the people that you're like, oh yeah, these guys really know what they're talking about. You know what I mean? Like, oh, they actually understand this. Like, no, it actually has. Like, these are just mods on Reddit. They have no idea. Like, an anarchists, yeah. Like, I'm an I'm unemployed and an anarchist. I've been surfing subreddits since 2020. And it's helped me in my journey. Whenever I started to begin, I started to begin to be unemployed. I can see how. Um, when I began to read the subreddit, I was a leftist liberal, namely a social democrat. I've been reading some of the literature from the library. For example, Bob Black's Abolition of Work. Oh, my God. By a 21-year-old yep. unemployed anarchist. You can't, you can't write this stuff. I, I'm not making, I couldn't make this up if I wanted to. I was a 21 year old unemployed anarchist. What are you trying to say? Yeah, what are you, what are you trying to say? I, and, and also long term unemployed? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, I didn't want to fucking work. Dude, my goal in life was to never have a job. That was it. I never wanted a job. All I wanted to do was sit around and play video games with the boys. That was all I wanted to do ever. And uh, it's like now I work all day, every single day, tirelessly to make sure that I never have to get a job. They removed the mod who went on Fox News to appeal to the masses and mm -hmm. tried to do as much damage control as they could. But unfortunately... The people were fed up. People tried yes. to blame Fox News, saying that they were acting in bad faith. They were. And it's like, they were. Yeah, of course they were. A mainstream <laughs> yeah. news outlet acting in bad faith. Wow, this is guessed. news to me. With the hardcore censorship going on in the main subreddit, it just yeah. fed into the stereotype of the movement. So people did uh -huh. what they did before, split off into factions. Yeah, when it's like a stereotype. It's like you see a brony, and you bring on a brony to talk about things, and he starts like talking about clopping and stuff like that. Or you bring on somebody who is... Uh, you know, like really into atheism, and he's like wearing a, a, a uh, I don't know, like a uh, Richard Dawkins t shirt or something like that. And it, it's like he's got the God delusion behind him. Magma with the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate that. Yeah, that's always what it is. Clopping? What the fuck is clopping? What's clopping? Oh, uh, so clopping is basically whenever bronies masturbate to the My Little Pony characters. Yeah, that's what it is. I've been on the internet 20 years. It's, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that bad. In this case, it meant different subreddits. Well, there were a few that sprung up. One of the biggest <laughs> ones was r slash work reform, created by yeah. user Reopol. It was supposed to be anti-work without all the nonsense. It right. lasted a few days before it was destroyed because of, you guessed it, the mods. We ended <laughs> up banning the creator of the sub for standing up for democratic principles. So I've been yeah, wanting to talk about this for a while, and now I think it's the perfect time. When a subreddit gets an influx of users in a short period of time, yep. it can be difficult for the original owners and mods to keep up with it. So what usually will happen is experienced mods will come and offer a helping hand. Most of these subreddits mm -hmm. say yes to help clean up their forum and make right, things yeah. run smoothly. But what happens nice is they have to, to give the new mods unchecked powers to do whatever they want. Uh -oh. And most experienced mods are power mods. This happens to almost every big subreddit. You ever wonder why every front page subreddit feels exactly the same? Politics. Made me smile. Am I the asshole? Today I fucked up. Because they're all modded by the same group of people. And yeah, it doesn't even take a general consensus of the mods if one mod gives power to another mod 
it can completely change the sub. Two good examples oh, yeah. are Dark Jokes and Reddit Moment, which are shells of what they used to be due to mod abuse. This exact Well, no, it's not because of mod abuse. It's because dark humor, half of dark humor, is things that are politically incorrect and they, they're against the terms of service. Like, uh, the jokes that you could make that were dark humor 10 years ago are bannable today. Of course dark humor is going to die. The only place you can go to get dark humor is on 4chan because you can't get banned. Like, that's the reason. Yeah, you're not going to have this on Reddit. Same thing happened to work reform. Power mods got involved due to the main guy being unable to moderate for over mm -hmm. 500,000 people. And I don't blame him, especially when he's making the standard Reddit mod salary. But seeing what the subreddit started to turn into, he got upset. This oh guy said God. he believes in freedom of speech and uh -huh. democracy. That even if people disagree with the core message of the sub, they should be allowed to voice their concerns and have discussion. Yeah. Do you know what happened to him after he voiced this? What? Well, I kind of spoiled it, but post removed and you're banned. The guy who literally started the subreddit was banned from it. Not for disagree that's the way it goes see people don't want to everybody likes democracy whenever people are voting on on their side that's and and really i always as i said many times i am always very much a doomer with this kind of stuff i always assume that people only want what's beneficial to them and the moment that it's not beneficial to them they change their mind and that's all it is yeah they're like oh we love democracy people aren't voting in my way yeah i mean this shit's rigged i mean this is we can't just let people make decisions for themselves they don't know what they're talking about we gotta have a you know a, a group of people that makes decisions for everybody else right i mean that's what it is agreeing with the message but for defying the echo chamber yeah now usually when something this insane happens it starts some drama and the biggest drama subreddit was well subreddit drama a few people tried to post this guy's story on the well, sub apparently like i've actually been posted on there because there's been drama on my subreddit too and i i've been posted on here too because i've just completely had like it's lsf well lsf is like its own thing right like this is a whole subreddit that's built around drama from other subreddits that's it reddit only for them to be removed yeah huh? Cares well, about it turns out drama? that the owner of subreddit oh, drama is buddy buddy with the owner of anti work and yeah. now work reform. So any posts trashing anti work of the mods would uh -huh. be removed or archived. Of Just course. complete corruption at every level. And well. Well, that's... in my opinion, like that's that's just the way that all this stuff goes. You're always going to have corruption, and that's that that's life. Like you have to expect that everything is rigged. And if you expect that everything is rigged, then it's completely fine. It's like whenever people disagree with me in chat on something that's stupid, I just ban them. I don't explain it every time, and I'm not going to go through this and, like, I'll go through it. I just ban them. And that's the way people do with, like, different communities. There's a lot of people out there who are, they are these, like, super argumentative people that like have to always have the last word in things and they feel like because they disagree with something you're obligated to hear them out and like listen to what their point of view is and the truth is like that's not really true like for example like that guy earlier today that was like trying to make these tweets like comparing me saying that like you should spit on store mount owners as if it's the same thing as like getting mad at streamers for doing gambling like, these are not the same thing at all. Like, this is completely fucking different. And anybody can see that because gambling streamers are getting paid a million dollars. They're not going to care about being spit on because there's not really that. There's nothing at stake there, right, with with amount. And uh, I'll make same much to five good subs, right? Thank you very much. Yeah. But, like, if I go and I explain this every time, if I go and I do this every time, then that's all I'm doing is I'm, like, explaining shit to other people, right? It's a, uh, yeah, you've got to have something. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing at stake. That's exactly it. And uh, it's that simple. And uh, I, what? But what if it really fucks you over? How's that fair? I got fired for reasons I think are wrong, and I can't do anything about it. Well, I don't know. I mean, maybe you. Maybe it was. Like, I have no idea, man. Yeah, I can't guarantee or whatever. Getting permits sucks, and don't be annoying. Then don't be annoying. Don't try to do some smart thing. That's what it is. Asmon turned the last servers back on. I can't. I, I can't turn them on until later on today, man. Uh, Blizzard said I have to shut them down so people play Diablo Immortal. Yeah, it's like people always try to have like that argument or whatever, or try to fucking like come out on the other side. Like if somebody approaches me and my and what I consider like a um, a, a, like something that's kind of like this is not done in bad faith, I guess, and it's not like argumentative. I'll usually try to respond to it, but if it's done in bad faith, I don't really take it seriously. You know, like there's no reason to debate me, Andy's. Yeah.
That's it. The anti-work movement Ooh. didn't battle it out until the fifth round. It made yeah. it to the big leagues and was KO'd right at the start of the first round. And <laughs> oh while it's God. still up today, the posts are even more pathetic given the circumstances. I'm not saying it's Wait, dead what's forever. The, uh, what's Maybe that the there? Are even more People should clock in whenever they leave home, but not whenever they get to work. The commute is not free time. Uh-huh. Yeah, I bet that's definitely going to happen. There's no way that could get abused at all. Yeah, sure, guys. That's great. Good idea. Absolutely. That's true, though? I don't think so. I think that's bullshit. Pathetic, given the circumstances. Yeah. I'm not saying it's dead forever. Maybe it'll come back, but it's in dire straits. While work reform and all yeah. the other split-off subs exist, they're nowhere near as close to what anti-work was at its peak. Mm -hmm. R slash anti-work, a tale of mods tanking a sub, which at this point should be a Greek epic, given how it's the story arc of so many subreddits. And uh, yeah, I think that's it. I'm yeah. not forgetting anything about the mods or the one who went on Fox News. Oh my God. Allegedly. Yeah, it's allegedly. Who knows about that? Yeah, people get mad about me. Uh, they, they said, Rich Take, man? <laughs> it's... I don't make a decision on something as to whether it's a good idea theoretically or not. Theoretically, it's a good idea that people could be compensated for the time that they commute to work. The reason why it's a bad idea is because it's so easy to be abused. And if you have something that's that easily abused, you're just not going to have anything happen. It's, it's going to create more problems than it will solve. Like you're going to how people clocking in saying traffic was bad. And then what if traffic wasn't bad and they just want to get paid more money? How can you verify that? You have no way of deciding that. How can people who are working farther away uh, get there ahead of time? There's like a million different ways that people can play the system. So whenever I look at anything as if it's a good idea or not, the first thing that I do is I look and I see if it's something that can be taken advantage of or not. And if it can be taken advantage of, then it's probably a bad idea. And so you work backwards to think like, can, is there a way that you can have this without people taking advantage of it? And in my opinion, I think that you really can't. It's the same thing as like people that like would take smoke breaks and like people would get mad that like people would take smoke breaks because they weren't normal breaks. And it's like, well then why should somebody be able to do that if they smoke cigarettes and I don't? Like I don't smoke cigarettes, am I being punished for being healthy? You know, it's these kinds of things. And, and so yeah, that's what I think, uh, that's what I think it is. Uh, just make an average time based on distance. Well, that's not going to be fair for a lot of people then. Like average isn't fair. It's just that that's the average. Yeah. And so that's the way I look at stuff. Compensation for travel costs is battle middle ground. Maybe that could be the case. Sure. I think it depends on the job. I think also like another big factor is like how much can you like tell an employer that they have to do something for you? Right. How much can you tell somebody like you have to do this for me? And I think that's also what a big difference is, too. People uh, wouldn't get hired if they live farther away. That's a great point. That, that, yes, yeah, that's a great fucking point. Absolutely. Uh, again, these are ideas that are really smart and good on a surface level. But the moment that you apply any type of criticism to them, they immediately fall apart. Okay. I want to watch the John Cena one, if you want me to be honest. Uh, I really want to see that. Yeah, there we go. Let's see here. And uh, what's this? Look, robots operate all business. Yeah, that's what it is. In EU, people are paid untaxed daily money for whenever you're too far for work. Also paid the mileage of your car. That's crazy. And they'll make everything more expensive too. You're always competing with people that'll take a job for less than you will. That's always true. Yeah. And like, again, like that's when it's going to become more and more the case. I want to say I've never watched a video from this guy, Ghost Gum, before, but I, I, I'm going to watch another one and see what it's about. But I really like this. Uh, I really like this video. I, I, I thought this was a great video. I'm going to link it to you guys. You guys can give me a sub. What, what do you guys think? Do you guys like it or what? Timer? All right. All right. We'll look at the verdict timer. Okay, guys. All right. 26 seconds. Yeah, we'll do that in between. Okay, guys.